All right, number nine, we talked about this yesterday. Do spices go bad? Well, it depends. Most store-bought spices have expiration dates, but you've got a few years. Even if they're old, they're unlikely to make you sick, but they might not have the flavor you'd like. You have to do the old rub test. Oh, yeah, you're good at that one. Crush, <laughs> crush or rub a small amount in your hand, and if the scent is weak and the taste is lackluster, just toss it. Ah. The old rub test. Ah. Uh, feeling down at work? Mm. Hello, Peter. What's happening? <laughs> uh, we have sort of a problem here. Yeah, you apparently didn't put one of the new cover sheets on your TPS reports. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, I forgot. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you see, we're putting the cover sheets on all TPS reports now before they go out. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. I just uh, forgot, but uh, it's not shipping out till tomorrow, so there's no problem. Yeah. If you could just go ahead and make sure you do that from now on, that would be great. And uh, I'll go ahead and make sure you get another copy of that memo, okay? Yeah, no, I, I, I have the memo. I've got it. It's right. Hello, Phil. Oh, What's happening? Um... God, how good is Gary Cole? <laughs> yeah. Is that it? Is that the end of the clip? Uh, if you're feeling down at work, no? <laughs> Milton. Hi. Uh, could you turn that down just a little bit? But I, I was told that I could listen to the radio at a reasonable volume from 9 to 11. Yeah, no, no, I, I know you're allowed to. I, uh, I was just thinking maybe like a, you know, personal favor. Well, I, 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 I told Bill that if, if Sandra's going to listen to her headphones while she's, while she's falling, then I should be able to listen to the radio while I'm collating. Uh -huh. So I don't see why okay. I should have to turn down the radio because yeah, all right. okay. I enjoy... We need to talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they say try the Pomodoro technique. Yeah. All right. That's where you work for 25 minutes. And then you take five minute breaks and then repeat. Oh. It was developed by a university student named Francesco Cirillo in the 80s. He was struggling to focus on his tasks and he was feeling overwhelmed. Uh, he named it after a tomatola pom pomodoro. Oh, yeah. Tomato, to be exact. Thanks. Since the tomato resembled the timer. Huh. Okay. That was a long yeah. way to go. That was a long Boy, way to go. It was a long yeah. way, but I think well worth it. That's Great all the good yeah. three minutes. Yeah. yeah. We got a lot of people do the opposite around here. They yeah. work for five minutes and then they take a 25 <laughs> minute break. Right, well, do what works Roger. For you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number seven. Uh, maybe you've seen this hack on the old TikTok. Maybe you have not. But try adding a piece of aluminum foil to your dishwasher. TikTok user Carolina McCauley does it. And she says that it leaves her silverware sparkling like new every time. All you need to do is crumple up a ball of foil, put it in the cutlery basket, and run the dishwasher as usual, and the results should speak for themselves. And again, our source for that was Carolina yeah. from TikTok. Yeah, Carolina McCauley okay. from TikTok. I well, gotta say, 90% uh, of the time that stuff doesn't work. Are you wor Am I worried about my silverware not you being shiny be. enough? Well, I did kind of know. Examine your life a little bit. Yeah. If you want to keep take pride, yeah, yeah, you should. Yeah, if you want some shiny, something shiny and reflective. Okay. Yeah. Think you want to put it. on a good impression for Mr. X when he comes over yeah, for dinner. Don't give up on life yet. You've got it's really ranking low years. on the list, but I guess I'll move well, it up a few notches. All right. It shows. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Get on there. Let me know how it works. Okay. Number six, we like to be current around here, so we're opening an English dictionary from the late 1800s Ooh. to look at some delightful Victorian slang terms that should be brought back. The first one. Oh, boy. Oh. Arf a fan, arf. I was just a little worried about reading that. I thought yeah. that could go bad. Yeah. You, uh, you did a wonderful job. Uh, yeah, there. that's a figure of speech used to describe drunken men. Ah. Oh. He's had many arfs or half pints of booze. Oh, I see. How about Bricky? That means brave or fearless. What a Bricky girl she is. Ah, great picture, oh, yeah. Robin. And then there's butter upon bacon, which means too much extravagance. Are you going to put lace over the feather? Isn't that rather butter upon bacon? Ah. Uh -huh. A church bell means a talkative woman. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Ding dong. Uh -huh. And doing the bear means 
courting uh, that involves hugging. Oh, now we're talking. Yes. Doing the bear. Uh -huh. A lot of huggers are around Great here. work by the graphics department yeah, well on that. Done. The unsung yeah. heroes of that story there. Well yeah, done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, number five, living it up is part of the whole college experience. Now you can get a degree in it at the top social sciences university in northern France. You can earn a master's. Does anybody know how to pronounce French words? Croix de vie. Really? That's it? What's the second word? You forgot the second you know, word. No, he said it. Croix de vie. I just made that up. I have no idea, but oh, it sounds French. Oh, it's M-A-N-G-E-R. Magé, isn't there? That's not on the screen. We didn't know oh, that I didn't was see on. that one. Sorry. Okay. All right. Or drinking, eating, and living. Uh, Sciences Polil is the first <laughs> nice. institution for higher education to offer a program in the art, science, and business of, is this Joyce de Vie? Uh, Joyce de Vie. Joyce de Vie. Joyce de Vie School. Officials say it involves more than a course on getting smashed. It's meant to preserve France's place as the world's most treasured culinary destination. Classes cover food tech, labor, philanthropy, farming, workplace relationships, and gastro diplomacy. Hmm. How gastro. close were you in that script to going to the control room and punching somebody in the crotch? <laughs> you know what? I could have done that, but it's, I also could have read ahead and yeah. Yeah. I might have looked up those words. <laughs> so true. I'm of yeah. equal blame here. I yeah. can't blame well, whoever's in the control room. Know they were gonna know I some just saw that the, story for the yeah. first time yeah. 35 yeah. seconds ago. Yeah. Yeah. Their writers and producers are trying to raise the bar around yeah. here, right. and they yeah. think maybe they will uh, will be elevated right. to the right. level they no, said. they're writing right. for the wrong people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and also, the French could be to blame also. Yeah. Yeah. They should come up with an easier language. Right. <laughs> they try English right. over yeah. there for once. All right, number four, if you've been thinking about getting into gardening this year, here's an idea, a little personal garden for your home. It's from LG. Looks just like a wine fridge, except you use it to grow herbs, vegetables, and other plants right in your house. Look at that. It's a little fridge with the plants in it. That's Comes fun. with seed kits. You can plant them right away, watch them grow. It waters the plants eight times a day for you, and it circulates air and light accordingly, so basically you don't have to do any work. Wow. It's $1,300 to have a cube with plants in it sitting in your room, but boy. Here we go. Hmm. Number three, looking for a new way to maximize your workout, try weighted spandex. It's a new type of exercise clothing from a company called Amorpho. The clothing has tiny spheres of weight sewn directly into the fabric to strategically disperse additional mass across the body and help build muscular endurance. Fitness experts say the key to getting more out of a workout is putting extra weight on active muscles. Omorpho makes all kinds of workout wear from weighted leggings to weighted arm sleeves. Oh, that's uh, an ingenious uh, idea, isn't it? Yeah. Boy, that's like a, an idea that could get you out yeah, of your regular day-to-day yeah. -day job. That right. seems like a really right. good idea. You don't have to buy the weights or carry the weights. They're, mm -hmm. they're right on your outfit. You'd find a problem with I it. I would. Yeah. I'd be sitting I'm down. Just, all I'm trying to do is walk to my car, and I got all this weight. <laughs> right. Yeah. I well. mean, I just want to walk to my car. Does yeah. everything have to be a workout? <laughs> I'm smelling a Valentine's Day gift <laughs> idea from Mr. X. Weighted he knows spandex. Better. <laughs> he knows better. Uh, all right, number two. Uh, is there really such a thing as love at first sight? Researchers in Australia conducted a study and they found Hold that on. Is the girl with the blue and white shorts coming up there? Hey, she's she's <laughs> job, Sorry. You've been here too long. That's that yeah. video has also. <laughs> anyway, the study found that on average men overestimate a woman's attractiveness and women underestimate a man's. Uh, the test subjects were asked to rate attractiveness based on randomly shown photos, some blurry where they couldn't get a clear view of the facial features, and some clear. They found when people had incomplete information about a potential love interest, they jumped to their own conclusions, which for men, they assume women are more attractive than they may actually be, and for women, they assume that the men would be less attractive. Huh. Well, that was a lot. I really don't quite don't get it. I don't understand any of that. So a man, when he sees like a blurred image of a woman, he's thinking, ah, she's going to be smoking uh, hot. And when they unblur it, he's like, oh, that was. Right. And yeah. women see kind of a blurry vision of a guy. And they're like, he's going to be a dope loser. And then they take the picture, <laughs> show the picture, <laughs> and he looks a little better. Uh, uh, because so women's assumption women are, is typically right. Right, yeah. And, and for men, men are casting living a in, wide net. Yeah, mm, hoping no. for the best. Mm. Does All right, that make sense now? Yeah. yeah. No, thank you. I still don't know why everyone's blurry. 
I mean, I don't get it. Maybe I mean, you see them or you don't. I mean, I, I don't. Yeah. Well, sometimes, no. yeah, maybe it's a smaller uh, meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's 9 12 meeting. already. You're right. I'm sorry. I got to move it along. It's All right, number you. one seems hard to imagine, but Steven Spielberg was not the first choice to direct Jaws. He had mostly worked in television before that, but he managed to get the job. He was only 26 years old. They used three mechanical sharks while making the movie, and some worked better than others. In fact, they were so temperamental that Spielberg had to work around them, and several of the most uh, of, those, of the most suspenseful shots did not feature a shark at all, which many believe worked even better to keep the audience on the edge of their seats. By the way, yeah. they called all the sharks Bruce after Spielberg's lawyer. <laughs> if so, if you saw the movie Finding Nemo, the shark's name was also Bruce in that, uh, which was a nod to Spielberg like uh, how about and that? Jaws. He was 26 when he 26. made that. 26. Wow. You hear that, Roger? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Roger. Come on, Roger. He's, yeah, come on now. Got a few more years. That's the nine at nine. You suck, Go Roger. Nine at nine. <laughs>